So I'm using replicate.com to run Flux LoRa's here, and I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to load a custom LoRa. So first of all, you need to go onto your fine tunes page within replicate.com for Flux, and the easiest way to access that from any page in Replicate is to go to the search box and just type in Flux, and at the top, you'll see it comes up with collections, fine tune Flux, and that'll bring you to this main page I'm on here. Now replicate.com use the words fine tune and Laura kind of interchangeably. So if I say one, it, it you know, they mean the same thing. So this is the page where we get to choose which Laura we want to use. Now these are all made by users, made publicly available for anyone to use um, with various styles and, and license terms and things like that, which are worth checking out. But I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to use these. So when you see one that you like the look of, like I like this, PS1 style, they often give you a trigger word, or in this case, a trigger phrase, which you've got to make sure is included in your prompt in order to apply the law correctly. So I'm gonna click on this, we'll go into it, and as you can see, it's given us very similar screen to the base models of Flux, um, in Replicate anyway. Similar parameters, same layout, but in this case, we've got um, an example prompt filled in by the creator of the LoRa, along with the resulting image or images, if they've done that. And at the start here, we've got our trigger phrase. Now it's not always at the start, but they normally tell you what the trigger word is or the trigger phrase. So you can look out for it in the prompt and make sure that that's, you always keep that there. So in this case, it's PS1 game screenshot. So I'm just gonna go down, have a really quick look at the other parameters here. I'm not gonna go into them in detail here because this is more of a, um, a broader look at how to use the LoRa's. Um, but a lot of them you'll be familiar with from the base models of Flux. So we've got images here, mask. You can use this for in painting, which means you can import another image into this with a mask applied, and you can apply this effect, this Laura selectively to areas of an image, which is quite quite fun. But that's for another video. Aspect ratio, that's obviously up to you. Number of outputs is completely um, up to you. Things that I would leave as defaults for the moment would be. Things like the LoRa scale, the number of inference steps, the guidance scale, and the prompt strength. Now, those four parameters I would leave as default on all LoRa's that you try, at least until you've got a few generations in and you're feeling that it's not giving you something quite what you're expecting. But for the most part, this has been developed around these specific settings for the best general output, so I would stick with those um, at least at the first stages. Then we'll go down and we've got a couple of other things which, which we're not going to get into now. And then the output format and your output quality, which you can adjust as normal. So we'll go back up here and I'm just going to type in um, a different prompt here. So I'm going to keep in the trigger phrase. Well, they say trigger word, but trigger phrase. PS1 game screenshot. And after that, I'm going to put Spider-Man drinking a beer in a pub with his pet pig. I'm going to click run and I'm going to come back in a second and see what it gives us. Spider-Man drinking a beer in a pub with his pet pig in the style of a PS1 game, which it looks pretty good to me. I mean, if you ran that prompt in just regular Flux dev, I don't know what you'd get, but I would imagine it's nothing as authentically bad looking as this. Although just out of interest, I'm going to put that up on the screen now just so you can see what happens if I ran the same prompt, but actually without the LoRa and see what we'll get.